again let us also try to settle another fact here is that it was not just a test it was a test of love number two point that is what noting in verse one and two is that god tempted abraham but it was a test of love it was a trial that is all wrapped around love god wants to know to what extent does abraham love him you see every living soul love for god can be professed but it will be tried the love for god you can tell god you love him so much you can tell your husband you love has love him so much you can tell your wife you love him so much but the truth will still remain that your love will be tested your love will be tried your love will be tested your love will be tried your love will be proven will be expected to be proven by you so it was a test of love look at what the bible said take thy only son the one whom you love it in other words take your only son and do something you have never done before kill him and sacrifice him for me on the altar the only reason why you will do that is to prove the extent of your love for me how strong is your love for god so you see your commitment to the house of god will be tested your hunger for the kingdom will be tested your desire for the kingdom of god will be tested your love for things of this world will be tested your love for god i love him so much it will be tested i want you to also note as number three point who and who goes through trials or test of life i said to it in your heart that whether rich or poor every child of god will be tested everyone who profess their faith in god will be tried the bible talked about the rich being tried the bible talked about the poor being tried but the point is this every true child of god whether rich or poor will serve his own measure of trial of faith abraham was rich he was tried joseph was poor when the trial began but he was tried peter was a closer disciple of jesus but he was tried mary mandalene was tried he was she was a one of the major women who sponsored the gospel of jesus she was tried daniel was a great servant of god yes sir he was tried the biggest shock to humanity was that many people who you thought were not for actually fair hmm others who even god thought will never fail him fail him and those who humanity will look at and say this one will never this one don't even have that kind of let's say this one doesn't even have that kind of hunger 
sometime in the midst of trial, that one survive. Trials reveals a man to the man, reveals someone's God to that man, and trial reveals others to you. Remember we said the other time that trial reveals you to you. It reveals what you can pass through. Some people will say, if my wife is no more now, I will not die. I will not leave. I will just kill myself. And when the wife is no more, he survived. Some people say, if I lose this job, I will just die. My life depends on it. They lose the job. The grace of God becomes sufficient. You don't know what you can endure until trials of life come. Hmm. You don't know what you can endure. The extent of endurance power that you have until trials of life come your way. Again, trials of life, temptation of this world reveals God to you. You don't know the extent at which God can intervene. You cannot tell the extent of the power of prayer without trial. You don't can tell the extent your way can go to prove that he is your father. For Daniel, God came into the lion's den and shot him out of the lion. For Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, God had to come inside the fire and appear as number four. <laughs> you don't know the extent at which God can show in the midst of your trial. You can't tell, you cannot, no, no, no. Trials of life reveals that extent of God to a man. Number three, trials of life reveals people to you. If anybody had told Abraham that Lot would take everything and disappoint him, he would not believe. But my friend, Lot actually did that. Lot did that. Lot did that. As long as life is concerned, as long as life is concerned. Trials will come to the rich. It comes to the poor. Another point worth taking note of is that trials of life is not always a proof that the man has sinned against God. It is a wrong assumption. Look at it here. Abraham was tempted. Here that Abraham was tempted, this rich man was tempted. It does not in any way mean that he sinned against God. This one has nothing to do with sin. The temptation of Shadrach has nothing to do with sin. The temptation of of uh, of uh, what is the name? Joseph has nothing to do with sin. There are trials that we pass through problems of life, challenges we face in life, and sometimes could be as a result of sin. But it is a wrong conception if you want to conclude that whenever someone is being tried or passing through some challenges of life, it is simply because you are sinning against God. Some people will say, God, what have I done? Where did I sin against you that you can never forgive me? What did I do? Tell me where I sin against that I can confess of my sin. You see, understand it and become more mature in faith today. That's why we do Bible study. Become more mature in faith today by understanding that not all trials are as a result of my sin. Sometimes God alone knows why he, he allow or permits the trial in your life. And when God allows it, 
Only him knows why. What he wants to prove. What he wants to find out from you. He wants you to respond and see how it will go. Abraham was tempted. Many of us will always be tried. Some are tried going through their trials right now. Some their major trial of life. Hmm. They have gone through it. I know some people in this, our different groups, sons and daughters in faith, who try out of life. Ha! At a point, it looked like their whole world crashed before them. The glory be to God. They are still marching higher, moving further and further in faith. You see, trials of life comes to the strong. It comes to the weak. Sometime in the midst of trials of life, you are tempted to say things that you don't want to say. You are tempted to go where you don't want to go. You are tempted to, to put your hand where you don't want to put your hand. You are tempted to, to act, to say. In short, sometimes even in the church where you think you are sacrificing your whole life for God, sometimes you can meet some trials inside that place. And you ask yourself, Lord, sometimes it looks like you should just seal your Bible and close everything in church that you don't even need church anymore. <laughs> Trials of life abound. Some will drag your Bible, some will drag your faith. But listen, God was the one who decided to come today. And the Bible said, and he tempted Abraham. God tried Abraham. It was a trial of love. God tried Abraham. God tried Abraham and said, Abraham, take your son and go and kill. God decided to try him and see how much you love him. The question today for you is, how much do you love God? How big is the love for God? What can you really sacrifice for God? You know, people make so much amount. Some people will tell you how much they love God, how big they love God, but small thing, they are out of it. They're out of it. Some people sometimes act like, say, oh, I love my wife so much. But small thing, they deny their wives. Some people claim I love my sister so much. I love my mother. I love this person. I care about this person. <laughs> but the truth is this. Love is not tested just simply by talking. If it's by talking, everybody can talk. True love is tested by time and sacrifice. Time reveals who cares, who truly cares. Sacrifice reveals who really cares. What can you sacrifice for this God you claim to love? What can you sacrifice? Over time, have you lasted consistently for God? There are different areas of one's life where our love and sacrifice for God will be measured. First of all, I want you to try to answer to what extent do you think you love God? I want you to try to answer that. Think very well. To what extent do you think you love God? What can you sacrifice for God's love? 
Think about it and tell me your answer. Thank you. Let's move on. Now, this love, this sacrifice will be measured in different ways. In service, service to God, service to humanity. If you love God, you will serve God. If you love your husband, to serve him food, to do things for him, to be happy, things that make him happy, will make you happy. Love is not all about receiving. Love thinks what can he give out. So when you love God, the Bible says, the greatest in this kingdom is the smallest, is the servant of everybody. You see, when you carry ego, you carry ego into the house of God, my personality, my riches, everybody should respect you, then you don't love. When you love, you don't care, you don't bring in what God has made you to be as a factor. No. You are everywhere because you love God. Another thing you use to check your love is your relationship with humanity your ability to be a blessing to humanity because who the bible said how can you say you love god and hate the creatures of god you can't love god and hate man you can't love god and hate people who are also created in your image and likeness so if you love god you will relate with man. If you love God, it will show in how you care for people. There are many times God will move you to sow into a life, to sow into a church, to be a blessing to the orphan, to the oppressed, to the hungry. Don't close your eyes. Be sensitive. I mean again, be very sensitive in the spirit. If you love God, be sensitive in the spirit. Number three, your love for God will be tested in your devotion. Your devotion. If you love God, it will show the sacrifice. Can What kind of sacrifice can you make for your devotion? Like now, you can see how we are waking up very early. Very early. Sometimes it is when that sleep actually is getting sweeter. And before you check your time, it is time for Bible study. Oh my God. Daddy gives in again. Brad gives in again. Ah, to five. You drag yourself. You get up for love of God. When you get to your time of prayer, do you love God so much that you want to stay in His presence? Daily, that this is the time for God to I beg. My Bible study time, I don't joke with it for anything. That is how I start my day. My prayer time, I don't joke with it for anything. How do you prove you love God? Jesus said that he that keepeth my commandment is he that loved me. John 14 verse 21. He that keepeth my commandment is he that loved me. And my father will love him also. When you become a practicer of the word of God. When you begin to practice what you are learning every day that even your church members can testify of a radical change in your life even your your priests can your friends can testify people in the market around you people that are in your neighborhood can testify that something is changing about you because if the word of god is not changing you then it's not it's not worth the pain so let's not just do it 
and and end it there let's do it and let the word of god turn us inside out but what through genuine christian is all about so that even in our most secret place i will fear god not because of brother not because of uncle but because i have relationship with god i have personal intimacy with god i have this connection between me and god when god gave instruction there are many people god has given instruction but because what god showed them or inspire them to go and do is sacrificial and the kind of sacrifice is not what they are ready to do so they wake up and saw a dream they wake up and had a revelation there yeah, sometimes they wake up and see that they are troubled to make some kind of happy hand to somebody to somewhere to an orphan, to an hopeless person, to a widow, to someone. But because it's not what they want to hear, they they discard it. Abraham had God and took the step immediately. He didn't waste time. He took the step. And look at this. Abraham got to the place where God wants him to give up isaac and he shocked everybody he told the servant to wait here because they are not involved in the sacrifice the son asked him i've seen everything daddy where is lamb sorry there where is the lamb that is made for the sacrifice <laughs> what a technical question and the man replied the lord asked me to come here the lord asked me to build an altar and offer sacrifice to him. offer burnt offerings to him. my son he said the lord will provide hmm. he said the lord god of jacob will provide now there is something I want you to observe in verse 11. When Abraham, for the first time, immediately get there and put his son, his son did not disagree when he was tied hand and put upon the wood to be slain. <laughs> the boy Isaac didn't react. What? I want you to imagine the sons and daughters of this generation. Ah, hey, that the daddy. You know, sometimes when I look at Jephthah telling the daughter that I may have made a covenant that the first person that sees me, I'll give to the Lord. And the girl said, Well, since I've seen you, daddy, let me go for the sacrifice. Is that how says selfless humanity was in the past? Hmm. But this generation is so touching. It's so touching that the question today is what kind of son have I trained? What kind of daughter have I trained? In the wilderness, it was a little boy who gave loaves and bread. Maybe the mother parents gave it to him to eat in that desert. He sacrificed it. Even when it will not be enough, he gave. And the Lord used it for a miracle. People talk about Jesus, talk about disciples, talk about the 5,000, but nobody talk about the little kid. He showed the art of sacrifice. Verse 11 says, the first time when Abraham wanted to give out the sacrifice, the angel appeared to him and said, Abraham, Abraham, lay not your hand upon your child, 
For now I know that you fear God, and see that you has not you have not withhold thy son, thy only son. <laughs> Did you hear God? And the angel said to Abraham, Look behind you, you will find a ram. Jesus. The angel appeared to Abraham for the first time again in chapter 22, which means if you look at the life of Abraham, you will discover his life was so filled with encounter with angels and angels and angels. Not once, not twice, not three times. He keep having encounter with angels of the living God. Hmm. So you, you can imagine how long we have been reading this man. And we saw, we have seen up to now, we have seen up to three to four times that angels had a counter with him, spoke to him, gave him instructions. <laughs> oh, God Almighty. How I wish and pray that many of us here it through the study of the word of God, we shall begin to have angelic encounters. Angelic encounters, giving us careful divine instruction. God made instruction to turn around our circumstances. Angel told him, Abraham, you know what? He said, God has seen your love. He said, God has seen your love. God has seen your love. And he named the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, the one that provides. The one the Lord provides. Now, the first time God appeared was in verse 11. The angel appeared in verse 11. I want you to be looking at your Bible. Observe it too. The second time when angel have finished noticing his love, his devotion to the Almighty God, the angel left him and went. And then told him that there is a ram at his back. He should use that ram for the sacrifice. The angel left. The Bible said in verse 15, and the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven the second time. Now, the angel called him the second time. The first time was in chapter verse 11. The second time, the angel called him again, Abraham. This first one was to prove to Abraham that his faith, his love, have been seen by God. He has passed this test. So the angel came to show his face and tell him, son, you have passed the test and left. The second time the angel came back was to give him the results of the test. <laughs> Glory to God. Observe it. Look at it. In verse 15, the angel came back the second time and called him Abraham. And he said, and said, by myself have I sworn, said the Lord. The first time he came, he solved the present problem, which was the sacrifice of the ram. The second time he came, he solved Abraham's future problem. He said, I've sworn by the Lord, because you have done this thing, because you have proven you love me. <laughs> now, and you have not withhold your only son from me. In blessing, Ah, I, I will bless you. In multiplying, Abraham, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, as the sand which is upon the seashore. Thy seed shall possess the gate of your enemies. In thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. Did you hear that? Because you have obeyed my voice. Because you have obeyed my voice. Because you have obeyed my voice. And indeed shall I see the blessed. And Abraham returned unto his young men. They rose up and went together. 
Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt there at Beersheba. It came to pass after this thing that it was told Abraham, saying, Behold, Mecca, she had also born children unto thy brother Nahor, who's his first son, and both the brother, and Kelmoy, the father of Aram. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The first time angel came, he spoke to Abram. The second time the angel came, he came with a blessing. You see, every time you are passing through trials, God will always come to check if you were successful. In the case of Job, angels were listening. And God said, he never cursed me. God is somewhere watching you. The second one, the angel said, you have passed. Look at all the blessings that you receive. When you see Abraham, all the blessings, you say, I want to be like Abraham. <laughs> you never know that behind the glory, Amazing. there were many stories. The truth is, in the midst of trial, when it comes to trials, when it comes to sacrifice, many a times, if you really want to make the sacrifice, you need to come to understand sacrifice has to do with personal. They are sacrifice we discuss as husband and wife. They are sacrifice that will be impressed on you. They are sacrifice that will be impressed on you, that you have to do it as a person. If you drag your partner into it, you have problem. You see, as per marriage, it is always good to share everything together. Talk about challenges and success. But when it comes to sacrificing or doing some things for God, sometimes you need to understand how God works, that it can be impressed on you to do it and not to do it tomorrow, but to do it immediately as the Lord wants it. So sometimes there are some sacrifice that comes. You don't even have time to share with your partner. And the impression becomes so strong that you have to do it. Abraham here, the sacrifice the Lord demanded was too sensitive that he didn't have to discuss with Sarah. Moreover, all through his encounter of God's promises, I will give you a child, I will give you a son. Sarah was not involved in all the encounter. It was between Abraham and God all through. Here also in the process of sacrifice was Abraham and God. If he must have thought over it, Sarah will never take it in this whole world. He decided to go for it and go ahead with the sacrifice. The point I really want to make here is that God demanded this sacrifice what he wants in the sacrifice. God also demanded where the sacrifice will be made. Observe that here. He said, you are going to go to land of Moreh and offer the burnt offering on that mountain. So the sacrifice place was chosen by God. The sacrifice requirement was also chosen by God. This is where many people miss it when it comes to sacrifice. They want to sacrifice either in the church or at home, either at orphanage or anywhere. 
they just hear from their friend or some in the church when people begin to clap they check and their friend got up for a particular amount that's what he also get up and say okay let's go and give this amount no sir that is not that's why many people complain that they give so much and they don't see results from this moment i want you to be able to be very mature when it comes to sacrifice, I tell people, the greatest advisor is Mary. Mother Mary was the one who gave the greatest advice on how to make sacrifices. What did she say? She said, whatsoever he asks you to do. He said, you should do it. So whatever he asks you to do. Hmm. Hmm. You see, don't allow the external environment be the one determining what you are to generously do for God. Let the inward witness of the Spirit be your inspirer of what to do. You will get it right. Mother Mary said to the disciples, this is the secret whatsoever he asks you to do listen to your spirit man whatever drops in your heart sometimes it is a particular amount that troubles you it starts start troubling you that is what the lord wants you to do it is not just all about going to club or going to places to show it's not about coming to orphan Furniture to show because everybody wants to come to furniture. It's not all about going to that sister or going to that person or that man of God. No. It is about who do the Lord move you to make the sacrifice to? Which altar of God? Is it the altar of God? Where is this sacrifice? Father, how do i do it pray to god about it and know where is he inspiring you to go what is he inspiring you to do mother mary said whatever he asks you to do do it from this moment let's get mature and not make sacrifice of conveniency or sacrifice of uh, where people wish for people to to know i'm a giver no it's good people know i'm a giver but my sacrifice is based on maturity god told him where and he went there well uh, Are you good afternoon sir um i is family and uh, work please sorry to bother you uh once again and the prayer group um it just the urgency of that uh, case is the reason why i say let me reach out again maybe help it can come from that end for us to address it um the result i sent to you there and that prescription was uh, the one we carried out yesterday because we come to hospital every two, two weeks for checkup because of that heart and uh, today from that yesterday if you check the result there you see six yeah that was yesterday we ran that test with the book us for yesterday and uh, every two, two weeks we have been coming that result there in general hospital is forty thousand but outside the house with 48 49 thousand that is how it's being run so we have been running it every two two weeks 40 40 thousand to monitor the clot in the heart so um like i told you before that they are making finding they have not arrived at anything so today they have told us that the heart uh, is failing that the heart that has been failing is the reason why that heart has not been uh, is retaining blood and the water that the heart is retaining so that the heart is not functioning normal but from this result we ran yesterday they said there is a little improvement because of those drugs they place are on 
So now they now place her on a proper drugs that she's supposed to take for that treatment now. So if you remember, I told you before that the previous drugs they were given to her are just preventive measure to avoid that thing from getting bigger than what it is before. Then and for the BP, that is what they are pres- uh, putting her on before. But now the, that drug prescription you see there now is what she needs. And that number one, the one up there, the first one up there is the one that she needs. And that draws alone, the one up there, like you can see, they have cost it. I've gone to the pharmacy, they have cost it there. Uh, it's 117,000. Then the other one down, added to it, everything is 166,000. I think it's something, as you can see there. So um, that is how it is. And uh, to be honest with you, as I'm speaking with you now, what I have left with me as per money is 20,000. That is what I have, 20,000. So um, that's why I'm just crying again to see how uh, if anything can come out, to see how we can get at that draws. Because the doctor said that number one is very, very important. That even if I do not get the remaining, I should get that number one for her first. Let her be taken. So for us to return in two weeks' time. So we are returning to the hospital on the 14th again. So for, to, with the kidney function test to know whether they will increase the dose of that test or they they will reduce it so uh, that is how it is please i know the prayer group have tried for us um just just that uh, uh, i'm really handicapped again that is why i say let me cry out whether help will come thank you so much sir, for your audience and uh, time thank you sir genesis chapter 23 contains about 20 verses of the scripture and in short genesis 23 started sorry genesis 23 will say is the beginning of the end of the story of abram that generation that that's the time of Abraham. The story of Abraham was about coming to an end. You see, the Bible says at and Sarah was an hundred and seven and twenty years. That is one twenty-seven years. These were the years of the life of Sarah, and Sarah died in Kejata. Kejataba, the same is Hebron in the land of Cana. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and weep for her. Sarah died at 127 years. The first point I want to make here was uh, is that sorry is that Abraham wife died. It's good to know that. A generation that started so well, a couple that started so well. One day, we're talking about their covenant, we're talking about their relationship, we're talking about their encounter, we're talking about every of their experience with angels, we're talking about a lot about them. But today, we are talking about the end of one of the partners. Death is inevitable. The greatest mistake a man can have in life is for him or her to live life as if there is no death. Sarah one day ended it all. And I know at the cost of her reading one day, we'll see where Abraham too ended everything. Beloved, no matter how eloquent you are and someone beautiful, you must always know that one day the end will come. No one lives forever here. The irony of life is that some people live life as if there is no order place called eternity. 
Some people live life as if life starts here and it ends here. They live life as if they will never die. You see, as we think life, let's also think death. As we plan life, let's plan death. Amazingly, two, three chapters from here, we're talking about Sarah's life. We're talking about Sarah saying, God has made me laugh. We're talking about Abraham covenant. But in the next few verses, we saw in the next chapter, we start seeing the returning back home of the wife. What amazing life. Life is very short. Use it wisely. When Sarah died, the Bible said, Abraham mourned. Abraham mourned Sarah. About two, three chapters ago, Abraham was so happy for the fulfillment of the promises of God. The next two, three chapters, Abraham mourning the wife again. What a life. The man that was happy suddenly became a man that was sad. There is time for everything in life. Things happen in life. This is these are the reason why your conscience must be free. This is a reason why you must live your life for God. You must do your business with your heart. Do your work with your heart. Live your life for God. Live a sincere, sincere and a holy life. Live a life that is honest to God. Live a life that is truthful. Live that life for God. Live a life that is pure. Live a life that your conscience is very, very free about. Live that life. Live a life that even if anything happens now, when people think you are going to heaven, it will be true that you are going to heaven. Live a life that is well prepared here on it. Don't live a life that destiny will hit you sudden. Live a life that is prepared every day. And moreover, this time we are, we are right in the end time. We are in the thick of end time. We are in the crucial moment of end time. So you have to live your life like someone who understands that the end is in view. The end can be at any time. Don't let God meet you unprepared. Thank God that we are studying every morning. Live your life prepared. Live your life holy unto God. Live your life expecting. Live your life believing that God will keep guiding you, leading you. And whatever happened in life, you are safe. Live your life prepared. Live your life. Invest right. Invest right. Prepare for future. Prepare for your children. Prepare for everyone you want to prepare. Have a master plan. Don't let life hit you unprepared. Live your life. As you plan life, Plan that. As you plan riches, plan also investment. As you plan business, plan also life after business. As you plan children education, plan children happiness after education. As you plan wedding, make sure you are planning marriage. Plan, as you plan for the rainy season, make sure you also plan for dry season. Don't let life hit you unprepared. As you plan for life here, plan for eternity. Make plans. Make plans. 
for both part of life must be experienced by all of us here on it. Hmm. These are deep talk, real talk that only God can remind us today. These are deep talk, real talk that only Yahweh can remind us today. The question today is this. Am I a man of integrity? Am I a woman of integrity? The food for thought this morning is, what do people think about me? Who am I in the church? Who am I at home? Who am I at the shop? When Sarah died, the people said Abraham was indeed a very good man. They were willing to give up anything, take and bury her. You have been a very good man. The king, every one of them were willing to say, please take, bury your son in this land. In this land of Hebron, in the land of Cana. In Hebron, in the land of Cana. Please do this. Be free. Am I a man of integrity? Do I have respect? Do I have honor? As we close today, as we close today, I ask you a question again. Do you have integrity? Do you have honor? Some people have destroyed all their integrity, even the, in the church. Some people have what they have built for several years. They have allowed one single person to provoke them that they scatter everything they have built in the church. All the integrity, all the reputation, all the respect they have built in the shop, in the church, at home, at their in-laws place. One single character, one single provocation from another person who don't care about integrity ended them tearing everything apart. Are you a man of integrity? Are you a woman of integrity? Do you have integrity? Do you have respect to protect? What kind of future are you building? Do you really have plan for your tomorrow and plan for your today? Spiritual plan for tomorrow, which is in eternity. Do you have physical plan, physical death? What will become of our children? Do you have future plan? So that even if these children, before they grow up, I will not say I am sure money will be available. There will be money. Don't worry. Before they grow up, there will be money. No, that is not plan. You don't plan and gamble with your children's destiny. It is important for me and you to start now to save for the children. It is important for me and you to start saving for their future. To start investing for the good of the children. Making quality investment in our life. So that when you have quality investment, you know that no matter what happened to your life or business, it will have nothing to do or affect any of your children. Do you have plan for your own marriage? Today is a day of reflection and today is a day. It is not a shouting day. It is a day Sarah died. So it's a day of reflection. I want you to take your time and reflect over your life, over your relationship with your God, over your plans for life, plans for future, 
Are you living all your life as if it ends today and you own your own life? Today, we see some people in power sometimes live as if life begins and ends where they are. But that's a life from the pit of hell. It's a deception. But in all, God is speaking to us. Make quality use of the time you are on this earth. This is the truth. I want to close with this statement that is dropping in my heart. It is very strong, but I'm going to still say it. And I want you, son, daughter, in faith, in this Lenten season, to please kindly hear me over this. Sir, do you know, do you realize, has he ever come to your mind that some of us today, the years we have ahead of us to live here on it is not up to the years you have already used. Hmm. Do you know that the years you have already, that you have in your front is not up to what you have already used? If you are up to 50 years here on it, I don't know if you have another 50 years in your front to live. If you are 45 years today, I don't know if you have another 45 years in your front to live. What does that mean, Brad Gibson? It simply means the years you have more in your front is not up to the years you have already used. Hmm. The years you have more in your front is not up to the one you have already used. So, the little you have remaining, what will you make out of it? What will you make out of it? Let us pray. Another vital point we will look at here is from verse 8. When Sarah died, Abraham began to mourn. He mourned for Sarah, he mourned for Sarah, and the people of the land where the Lord sent him to, all of them were mourning with him. The scripture said that Abraham pleaded with the people of the land and said to them, please, that they should spare him a land so that he can be able to bury the wife in the field there. And somebody came up and said, the king announced Abraham's request. And the man that Abraham pointed to the land that he wanted to use, the man got up and said to Abraham, you don't need to buy my land. You have been a very good man. Even though you are, you came in like a stranger, but you have become part of us. He said you have become a very good man to us. Take the land free. Please take it. Don't pay a dime and bury your dead. Wow. You see, righteousness pay, goodness pay. Abraham said, I want to bury my wife. Somebody said, take that land of mine, as many you want, bury your wife. Don't pay me anything. Please take and bury your wife. Do you have somebody at a crucial moment in your life who can look at what you have done and be willing to offer you something, make sacrifices for you without you being frustrated? Do you have somebody or some people you can cry now and you say, ah, 
he will leave or she will leave whatever he is doing or she is doing and he will be here. Do you have somebody who can make sacrifices and say, I'm sure even at the lowest time of my life, he will back me, stand by me and be able to remember all the good things I have done. If you have, that simply means you have been a good person. If you don't have anyone, that means you have been a bad person. Because if you have been a good person, you'll be surrounded by good people. If you are a bad person, no one will be there to help you at the crucial moment. If you have been a helper of many people, if you have been a helper, impact makers, impact maker in life, at your low point, people will rally around you to see how they can be of help in your life. But when you are selfish, self-centered, lazy, and only caring more about your own life, you will, at your low period of life, you will not find any help. Hmm. Abraham replied this man and said, I'm sorry. I'm grateful that you are willing to give me the land free of charge. Hmm. Abraham replied, I'm sorry. I would like to pay for it. Please take the money from me, verse 13. Abraham said, please take the money from me. I want to pay for the land. I want to pay for the land. And Abraham said, the man replied again and said, sir, the money you are asking to pay for this land is what about 400 shekels of silver? This thing does not reach. It's far, far beyond what you are to me. You have done far beyond this particular amount. Please, please, take your dead and bury. And Abraham said, no. I will pay for it. <laughs> Beloved, that is the spirit of a man. A man who do not just want you to do things for him. A man who work hard. A man who is blessed. A man who wants to make sacrifice. A man who knows the power of sacrifice. A man who knows that whatever he wants, he will get, he will pay for it. A man of integrity, a man of honor, a man of respect. Even when they say take, he says, I'll pay for it.